we're in the heart of Hatfield House. Uh, very lucky to have this set up here. Um, a very friendly club as well, um, with, with a good group of members. I think we've got about 230 members at the moment. It came to be here as many of the um, people that could afford to do it uh, took the opportunity to build courts when it became popular, particularly in the 1800s. Initially it was for the family, so uh, Cecil family who, uh, who uh, own Hatfield House. Um, it was originally built for them, uh, I think 1842 was when the court was originally built. Um, and so yeah, that was purely for the family. So my name is uh, Stephen Brewerton and I'm the chairman here at Hatfield House Real Tennis Club. My name is John Dawes, I'm the head professional at Hatfield House. If they had the space, then they went ahead and put one up and it was mainly for the family to play and their friends to play. And as it developed over time and moved into the 1900s, then it, we gave them, gave them the opportunity for outside the estate to come and play as well and build the club further. And then it was about the 1950s when they started letting other people use the court. Um, and then 1970s when the club was first formed. Um, and yeah, since then kind of gone from strength to strength. So we just, yeah, we rent the, the building basically from the estate. And so we're just part of it. Lord Salisbury comes down and spends a bit of time at the court, a couple of times a year at least, just to see how things are going and to and to sort of express his 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 gratitude, but also interest in the in the way that we're you know managing the situation and managing one of his you know his clear assets. It's been a members club now for about fifty five years, um, so um, yeah, the members have taken it on board and they've we've got a very good relationship with the house as well. Um, so they come and use the court and play and they come and support our tournaments as well. They're very supportive of us. They know that we are an asset to them in the same way that you know, we enjoy the facilities that they provide for us. Um, we look after the court well and it does become part of the uh, features of the estate during the summer and people and the general public are able to come in and spend a bit of time you know, seeing the game in, in action. I'm James Law. I've been at Hatfield House Real Tennis Court for almost 10 years now, so I'm a senior professional here. And yes, it's, it's great. I mean, we we have people come and sit in the dead on, and um, and they, first of all, they think it's just a historical artifact that's here and no one's using, and then they quickly realise that our members are taking it very seriously, and uh, they, they sit in there and they cheer on, and hopefully we get a few extras come back for, for a tryout themselves. It's basically sort of very middle of the road as far as real tennis court goes it's obviously it's a it's an older court it's more established so it doesn't tend to bounce as much as the newer courts do um but yeah it's, it's very middle of the road it's not particularly fast um cuts down if you cut it doesn't if you don't um you know, walls are, are maybe a little bit dead by comparison to some so it doesn't come out the corners quite as much i think we're in some respects we're very lucky because it, the, the court plays very true um everyone who comes here usually has a good experience on the court um, our members unfortunately don't get too much home court advantage so uh, when we play our matches uh, the, the, um, the guests usually get used to the court very quickly and um, that, that usually means we're going to have some very tight matches and some very exciting matches here at the club. Serves are generally dreadful here, um, it doesn't take an awful lot of spin so it's more about trying to serve length and, and, and generally just yeah I mean, cutting the ball does work well here. Um, it's got quite a big dead on as well, so relative to, to a lot of courts as, as far as certainly close to the main wall. Um, there's a very small section of wall really between main wall and dead on, so, so main wall dead on forces work pretty well. I think it's, um, it's got a very, very lovely shiny floor. Um, it's very photogenic. The penthouse, whoever chose to go pink with a penthouse um, was a genius because it, it just brings the court to life. It's, it's a very bright court um, and it, I think it, it, it shows up really well on the cameras. We've got a, got a couple of uh, couple of local rules. So one, the, the blue line uh, at the top of the court is in play. Most courts it won't be because it's a wooden board or, or some different material. But but here the walls are quite low, so the uh, the, the lines around the the ends of the walls are, are in play. If you go through the beams, that's out of court. Um, so that's that makes higher serves pretty risky. But they they work quite effectively this weekend. Um, and the one last one in the top corners of each four corners, we have a metal frame. If a ball goes penthouse and up into the corners. It keeps the ball in, but will be in, in elsewhere. Um, so it, you, know, you can't go for it directly, but if you go penthouse inside the frame off a mishit force, then it stays in play. It's not my favourite rule, to be honest. I'm, I'm quite keen if they get rid of that, but uh, I, I seem to be outvoted on that one, so we, we keep it in. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're a small club. Obviously, we're very dictated to as far as um, the, the area we have. We can't just go extending. You know, we're, we're part of Hatfield House, so we don't get, we, we've got to make the best of what we've got, and I, I think we do that. So obviously, being an old court, we are a, a listed building, so we can't really expand too much. 
um, but we have changing rooms for men and ladies on the far end. We have one court with a, with a nice club room. We've got a really nice club room, uh, which is uh, using for entertainment for, for this weekend, certainly for, for dinners and lunches and stuff as part of it. And, and uh, yes, yeah, kitchen, dining area for social matches. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll provide lunches in there for social matches. We have Wednesday night pennants and stuff. So again, they'll, they'll use those facilities for dinners and stuff. We obviously hold a committee meetings in there. So each year, really, there's only sort of two main uh, main tournaments that we have each year. So we have the uh, have the uh, Billy Ross Skinner. The uh, Billy Ross Skinner, which is the in, uh, the LRTA's uh, Ladies Invitational Mixed Doubles Tournament. So we have the top 16 in the world available um, ladies, and then the organisers pair them up with men to make the pairs balance so the tournament's all off level and we have 40 all games just to spice it up. And then we have the category D, so it's a sort of 30 to 39 handicap, so we, we have that every year as well. We, we generally run it as a 30 to 34 bracket, and then the 30 to 39 bracket. Very good event for up and coming players, and also the, the old guard as well, who, are, who have had some very wily tactics, so it's uh, usually new against old, and there's usually some very close matches. Quite a lot of different competitions and different mini leagues and different things such as night pennants and internal competitions. So we have our, we have our annual summer party, we have um, club tournaments as well. I mean, the, the club tournaments, unlike some clubs, we run throughout the year. So our finals weekends, we have the, um, the end of the Tufton Rackets, the knockout stages on that on the Saturday, and then we have finals day on the Sunday, and that's when all the, all the members come down and they support all the tournaments that have been played throughout the year. We have a lot of internal stuff, so we have, uh, through, through our season, we, we have all the different sort of level category events, so for, for each, each different handicap bracket, get their own level tournament. We have a, a major, one big handicap event, handicap singles, um, and then doubles and handicap and level doubles alongside. We did, uh, the chairman did introduce a, a tournament called the Hurricane as well a few years ago. And that's a very sociable tournament where you turn up, you, uh, you don't know who you're going to play with, uh, names get picked out of the hat, and then uh, you play a doubles uh, tournament all the way through the weekend. As I said, we, uh, we have the sort of Wednesday night pennant, uh, which I mentioned we, uh, um, where, you know, works really well. So again, the sort of dinner is part of that afterwards, social matches as, as normal, and then we, we do club nights and that kind of thing. So there's a lot going on on the, on the notice boards that people can get involved with. And, you know, we're keen to try and add new new events to the, the calendar where possible but uh, yeah luckily the courts are reasonably congested so not too much space for that kind of stuff and not only that they actively contact you and invite you to come and play in the competition so that you feel as though you're included as part of the club one of the key benefits and this happened to me 25 years ago and i first started playing is that you come down for an introductory session before you know it they're on the phone to you asking you if you can come and play on a tuesday afternoon which you don't get at many clubs because most of the time it's the members contacting each other to organise things, whereas here you've got this catalyst of a, of a um, team of people that are trying to get you on core and getting, getting more involved with the, you know, with the club as a whole, which is evident in the competitions that we hold and the, and the club matches that we hold when we play other clubs as well. We're as sociable as we can be. Um, we are a very small setup, um, but yeah, I think we do generally pretty well. Yeah, we have a very varied membership. Uh, it's a very inclusive game, so you can be at any level of uh, ability, which is one of the, the best benefits of playing real tennis is that it, it doesn't, it's not elitist. It doesn't just allow for those that are generally good at sport to come and do it. You can play using the handicap system at all levels and it's all competitive and everybody feels exactly the same about uh, how well they're playing and how they're doing in the bracket that they're in. The members are fantastic. They, they help out for all the events. I think we're quite renowned as one of the friendliest clubs in the country um, and we always try and make the guests welcome but yeah we've got a real real tight group of I think active members probably about 180 who play regularly um, so everyone knows everyone and um, every time guests come here as well they, they generally have a very good time so we, we always try and host as well as we can. The professionals themselves are very good at um, uh, the introduction lessons and and letting the new members feel welcome and also allowing them to learn the game at their own pace and play it at their own pace as well. Email us at um, pros at hhtc.co.uk or they can give us a call at the club uh, 01707 273 391 and uh, we do introductory sessions, group or individual. The individual sessions run at £20 a session for the first three goes and group sessions you can have for £5 per person if it's three or more people.